if I could, Madam President. Oh, go right on. That's okay. As Mrs. Cato, go ahead and come on up, guys. And Mr. Eagleman are coming to the microphone. Um, just to let you know, I think all of you know, but Mrs. Cato is the principal at Myers Elementary, and Mr. Engelman is the principal at Indian Hill. Next week, as all of you know, we'll begin to phase in our approach to bring back students, starting with our young fives and our kindergarten students. All of our elementary principals and staff, including our transportation department, food service, nurses, custodial team, they've been all meeting to make this happen for us. So I'm excited uh, this evening to have two of our principals who stepped up and said, Mr. Garner, we would like to present this to the board. So Mr. Engelman and Mr. Cato, Mrs. Cato, thank you for that. I know you have a lot to share tonight, so we'll turn it over to you. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Garner, for that. Um, thank you for having us, everyone. We're very excited to talk about returning to the classroom. So that's what we're here to talk to you guys about today. So if you go um, to our next slide, as you can see, it's October, it's coming up next Monday. We actually have students coming back into our building starting Monday. Um, we're starting with our young fives, our kindergarten, and our GSRP students. Um, and then you can see on October 12th, we'll slowly add in grade, um, grades one, grades two. Um, Pick will add in grades two and three. And then on October 26th, we'll have grades three, four, and five, and Pick will have grades four and five. So by October 26th, K, our K-5 buildings will have all of their students in them. They will be on every other day um, plan so that you'll have half of your students in each classroom to help social distance. Um, We'll get to that slide next, but you can see we'll continue to have weekly playlists uh, for all grades as students have, they'll be on for two days a week, so those days that they're not in the building, we, uh, the teachers will push out playlists for things for the kids to work on when they're not actually face to face with a teacher. Uh, we're looking at starting with our youngest students first. We know it's important to try to slowly move everyone back, but we thought it was best if we started with our young guys and our kindergartens just for that fact of having to be able to be with an actual teacher in a classroom and, and what that actually brings to those kindergarten students and who most of them are coming to the school for the first time. Um, some of them at preschool, it may have gotten cut in March. So, I mean, they're really kind of starting over. So we thought that was really beneficial if we brought them first. Um, as I said before, they'll be assigned independent work on those two days that they're not with a teacher. So there's two days that they will be with the teacher, two days that they will not be with the teacher, and then on Fridays will be a remote live day. So that's similar to what we're doing right now. So right now, elementary students sign on at nine in the morning and they're live with their teacher until noon. That same thing will happen on Fridays. We can go down to the next slide. Oh, yep, perfect. So as you can see, we'll have two groups and we'll have a group A and a group B, and they're based on your last name. So if your last name is A through K, you will be in group A, which means you would attend face-to-face -face with a teacher on Mondays and Wednesdays, so you can see that in the um, yellow there. If your last name is L through Z, then you're in our group B, which means you would have a live face-to-face -face teacher on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you can see in the purple there, if you're group A, you're at home days where you're not live with a teacher would be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if a teacher was teaching on Monday to those kids live, they would then, at the end of the day, give them their things that they would need to work on at home. The students would work on those on Tuesdays. There is time built into the day where they can meet with those kids at home on the computer, which I'll get to that next. And then they would come back Wednesday with the things they worked on, they'd review with the teacher, and they'd move on to their next lessons. And then you can see Friday's the same. So they'll get live instruction with all of their kids. So the teacher gets to wrap up the week with all of their students and kind of go over the things that they did for that week so that they can then prep them for that next week. So you can see our times are a little different when they come back face to face than if there was like a typical day. So it'll start at 8.40, which is our normal time that we used to start. And then it ends an hour earlier. So it ends at 2.50 rather than 3.50. And we did that because we wanted to be able to give teachers 30 minutes to be able to meet with any students that maybe they didn't have face-to-face -face that day, and then it gave teachers some planning time because they are losing their planning time with, um, well, not losing it, but they're just not getting it all during the day. They're getting it broken up in different chunks. So they'll get it at the end of the day, and they'll also get it during their special time. So then you can see on those opposite remote days, um, there's times in there that say like 9 to 11. Now that's not, you don't have to, parents wouldn't necessarily have to follow that model, but if you're looking for structure to try to help 
keep your kid on track when they're at home, you could follow that. You are gonna be working and doing these things from nine to 11. And then their afternoon time is when they would have specials. So the specials teachers will be recording lessons that the students could then access in the afternoon. But really on those opposite days, they could be doing them. They can do it at their own pace on however they want that to work. We just put the times in to try to help create structure if you want that at home. And then if you look on that Friday, it's the back to the same remote time that it is right now. It'd be from 9 to 11.45, live instruction. They have their lunch, and then the afternoon time would be similar to what it is right now where they would have specials, but it would be recorded specials that they could then access, um, and they could choose to do any of those things, any of those specials, music, art, tech, PE. We can go to the next one. Please. So this slide is the exact same, but this one's for Perry Innovation Center because their times are different. Um, so you can see it's all the exact same thing. They're just times are from 7, 40, 35 to 145. Um, just because of their days are different with having elementary and middle school students, they've always been on a different time schedule. So that's why we created that hybrid plan for you there. All right, and then I have a few just key concepts that we feel are important to emphasize. Uh, we're expecting that parents have a responsible caregiver at home or a parent themselves to screen their students before sending them to school, looking for any COVID symptoms and taking their child's temperature. If a child is ill or has been around anyone with COVID symptoms, it is our expectation that those students will not come to school. And we have specific screening directions and protocols for sick students that can be found on the district's website. Along with that, I've also included in your packet a couple of handouts that Andrew Calvert put together working with our district nurses. Those are really nice. We can't kind of cover every what if scenario, but those are a good starting point with kind of a flow chart of what we're gonna do in different situations. If a kid is sick, kind of go through the flow chart to determine what are our next steps and how do we handle that. Same with if a student or a staff member becomes um, positive with COVID. What are the steps and to kind of go through those flow charts. So, so I think both of those are extremely helpful as well. Next slide. More points. Um, as we kind of work through this process, things pop up. One of the things that we talked about was the fact that we want our parents to be mindful of who they have as their emergency contacts. If great grandma's listed, but she's not comfortable being around Johnny that's exhibiting COVID symptoms, then that's probably not the best person to have for your emergency contact. So families, just to be aware that whoever they have listed there, if they can't be contacted, that there is somebody that would be able to pick their child up. We have hand sanitizer stations spread out around the building. Students are gonna be encouraged to use that option if they are unable to use, go through the hand washing. Students will be expected or will hope that they'll bring in their own supplies to avoid having to share. If sharing is necessary, then items will be sanitized between use. Right now our drinking fountains are closed, um, so we're encouraging kids to bring a water bottle with their name on it, but we do have the non-touch water fill stations still operational in the building. Every building has established an isolation room, um, and we've also had training for at least three staff members by our district nurse on the protocols of running that isolation room safely. Masks must be worn by everyone at all times, unless they are eating. That's the expectation. Reusable masks should be labeled with the student's name, and if they don't have a mask, we will provide one. Okay, so I'm gonna go over transportation uh, for elementary families. It's, transportation has changed a little bit. Um, so parents and guardians have been advised that buses will not allow for six feet of social distancing. We are gonna put one student on a bus and the person across from the seat is six feet, but it's not necessarily that every other seat behind it because we'll have another person behind there. So there isn't necessarily six feet from the person in the seat behind you or in front of you, but there is on the one opposite. Um, buses will have assigned seats so that student will stay in that same seat each day. Um, there could be a chance that siblings will have to likely sit together. We're also having students wear masks the whole time that they board the bus, ride the bus, exit the bus. There are hand sanitizer dispensers that have been installed on buses for students to use when they get on and when they get off before they enter the building. And the transportation department has will be contacting or have been starting to contact families to let them know are you will, are you riding a bus or are you going to be um, driving your kids separately? All right, last but 
but not least, we'll talk about dining services. The good news is every student in the district is being offered free breakfast and free lunch if they so choose. So that's a new thing and pretty cool for everybody. Our dining services is going to continue to distribute their free packaged meals. They are going to move that from Thursday to Friday because Friday everyone is remote. So we won't, it won't be like we'll have some kids that are in school and can't get, to get, can't get over to get the free meals. Um, Students that are face-to-face -face can still pick up five days of prepackaged meals, while students that are not receiving face-to-face -face instruction will get seven. All buildings are going to be nut free, and that's really just due to space issues. We used to have a separate area in our cafeteria, but now that we're spreading everybody out, a lot of us are have, or we feel the need to eat in our classrooms, and we just don't have the space to have that separate area for those students that are allergic to peanuts. So to make it safe for everyone, we're going to just say that we're nut free at this time. We do need to encourage, and we'll continue to do this, all of our families to please fill out the free and reduced lunch forms. And that's all we have.